What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp Sandbox Tools tutorial for you. So in today's video I'm going to talk a little bit about the difference between the drape and the stamp functions and how you might use one or the other of them um, in order to work with terrains and other surfaces in SketchUp. So before I get started we're in the middle of the SketchUp Essentials course fall sale right now. Basically what that means is that means that the month-to-month -month access to the course is now on sale for 30% off. Meaning if you have been interested in getting in that course um, and learning how to use SketchUp in a step-by-step -step environment where I'm there to answer any questions that you have. Um, this is a great time to jump into the course. So um, again, that is on sale for 30% off. That's going to get you full access to all of the instruction in the course. It's going to get you the community forum. It's going to give you access to the live calls, um, everything that comes along with the course. So if that's something you're interested in, you can check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash fall sale. 2021. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so working with terrain in SketchUp can be a little bit tricky. Um, usually we're going to use the sandbox tools extension that's built into SketchUp in order to do this. So you should be able to enable that just by right clicking and clicking on sandbox to pop up this window. You might have to go in your extension manager and make sure that sandbox tools is enabled. But what we want to do is we want to look at two of the functions that are contained in here, specifically the stamp and the drape function and where they might be helpful. And so let's actually start off and talk about the drape function. And so let's say that you've got a complex surface like this one right here, right? If I turn on my hidden geometry, what this has is this has a whole bunch of like triangular geometry in here. And um, that's basically what makes up the terrain faces inside of SketchUp. Well, a lot of the time what you want to do is you've got a shape like, like a footprint or a road or something like that. And you want to affect the terrain with another shape. Well, first off, the drape function is going to allow you to take a shape. So something like this circle right here, it's going to allow you to drape the edges from that shape onto this surface. So it doesn't affect the surface down below. What it does is it splits it up using geometry. So I'll show, I'll show you how that works. So what, what you're going to do in this situation is we want to drape this shape onto this terrain. So we're going to select this face right here or this shape. Then we're going to select the option for drape. We'll notice how when you select the option for drape, this is going to tell us to select the mesh on which you wish to drape. So what do you want to drape this on? Right, And I will note that if this was in a group, this wouldn't work. I'm pretty sure that your geometry that you're trying to drape needs to be either in the same group as the geometry you want to drape on, or they just need to not be in a group to begin with. But um, what we're going to do is we're just going to click right here in order to drape that circle on our surface. right? And so if we look at this, notice what that did is that took the edges of the circle and it dropped them down and intersected them with the surface down below. Well, what that means is that means that now this is split. And so why would that be helpful? So this would be helpful, A, if you want to create a surface in here that you can apply a different material to. So if you've got a circle that you want to apply a material to, um, actually like intersecting geometry with this or trying to draw it out on the face would be really difficult. But when we drape this on here, it's really easy. Like let's say, for example, I wanted to apply the grass dark green material to this shape. Well, because this has split this off into its own face, we can now do that. And so maybe a more useful time that we might use this is might be something like a road where we're trying to like indicate a road moving through a canyon or something like that. And so the way that would work in this situation is we could click on this right here. We could click on the drape function and then we could click on the surface down below. Well, notice what that did is that came in here and that just draped this on the surface right here. So now this is split out. So let's say that we had like a vegetation blur applied over here. Well, then we could come in here and we could apply like an asphalt material to this right here. So it's really good for like indicating where roads and other things might go. Um, we'll come back to this in a second. But now what I want to talk about is I want to talk about the stamp function because the drape function doesn't affect our terrain in any way, right? Other than splitting up the faces, like the, the actual topology of the terrain is unchanged right now. But if you want to, like for example, let's say we wanted to put like a house footprint into this hill right here. You don't want to use the drape function because that's just going to put something on the face that you can't actually affect, right? I can't push pull it or anything like that because it's a curved or smooth surface. But the stamp function is going to allow me to take a shape and stamp it into a shape. 
So let's say for example that we wanted to create a building footprint in this hill. Well, what we could do is we could activate this tool, the stamp tool, and it's gonna ask you to select the face that you want to stamp into a surface. So I wanna stamp this into the surface, so I'm gonna click on it, and then it's gonna ask which mesh you want to stamp into. Well, in this case, we wanna select this one right here. Um, for more complex meshes, by the way, you might want to save your model before you do this. But we're just gonna click again, well, notice how what that does is that takes our surface and it stamps it down into the terrain. So when it stamps it down into the terrain, what that means is that means that now we can adjust the height right here. And notice what it's doing is it's basically taking our footprint and making it flat. And then it's using an outline a certain degree outside of our shape. And it's just creating a slope from this surface to this surface right here. So notice how what this does is this gives us these really um, these really pronounced walls that go into this face right here. And so another thing that you can do with this, and I'm gonna go ahead and undo that right there. Another thing you can do with this is if you select this and activate the stamp tool, notice how this gives you an option to type in a new offset. So if you remember, the offset before between the mesh and our flat surface was only about a foot. Right, so basically it's gonna be this transition distance between the red line and the line right here. Well, you can type in a new value, so maybe like five foot, and hit the enter key. And this line doesn't update dynamically, and so a lot of the time what we need to do in order to get that to show up is just click off of this and restart the tool. But if I click on this tool now and click on this face, notice how this red line is further away from the perimeter right here. Well now, if I was to click on this surface, notice how the slope to the top of this is a lot wider, right? So instead of it being like straight up, if we look right here, for example, you've got a much wider slope going around the outside of this. And so you can make that as big as you want. So if you want that to be more gentle, you could type in maybe like a 15 foot, which may be a little big based on this mesh, but that's okay. Um, so we'll go ahead and click in here. We'll notice how that gives me an even wider offset. Well now, if I click, notice how this is gonna slope a lot more. And be careful with your shapes because you might get some kind of like weird overlaps in here. So because this shape has this kind of like L in here, the offset of this side right here was overlapping with the offset over here. So just be careful with that when you're doing that. But, so in general, um, what you're gonna do is if you want to split a face, and mark it up with materials or something like that. You want to use the drape tool. If you want to, if you want to actually adjust your mesh so that something follows along with it, then you're going to use the stamp tool. Now, notice how we could use the stamp tool for something like this road, right? So if I was to move this road over, and we'll go ahead and put it right here, we could definitely come in here and use the stamp tool in order to stamp this down. So I'm going to bring my offset back down to like three feet or something like that. But um, we could use the stamp tool in order to stamp this down in order to actually affect our terrain like this. So notice how I can use this in order to kind of cut this road in. Now do be aware that um, it is very uniform, right? So you can't really like make your road follow along the terrain. Like notice how this is completely flat. So what this is doing is this is bringing this up over here and down over here to kind of cut this through the hill. And so just note that you could use this to come in here and create something like this, but you are gonna have to do some kind of like geometric adjustment in order to fully get it to do what you want. But it's still very useful for stamping things into terrain inside of SketchUp. All right, so I will link to some other tutorials about sandbox tools on this page. If you were interested in going more in depth and learning SketchUp, the course is on sale through tomorrow night at 11.59 p.m. So I will link to that in the notes down below as well. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.